Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another video. And today we are going to check the first generation of Intel's Core i7 processors. After much success and domination on the CPU market with the Core 2 Duo and Core 2 Quad line of processors, Intel introduced the Core i line of products and made it easy with consumer friendly name, especially when we consider recent products. The high-end Core i7 processors were the first to release in June of 2008, with the i5 and i3 processors following a later time. The i7 lineup was divided into three main tiers. The lower end, Linfield processors, which were made on 45 nanometer process and used LGA 1156 socket and the P55 Express chipset. Then it was the mainstream Bloomfield processors, and finally the most expensive 32 nanometer Golf Town Extreme processors, both using X58 chipset and a socket LGA 1366. What we look at today is an Intel Core i7 960. Released in October 2009 and for around 300 USD, it was the fastest non-extreme offering clocked at 3.2 GHz across its all four cores. This generation featured Intel's Turbo Boost 1.0 technology that would happily overclock the i7 to 3.46 GHz across all four cores. To help getting the best out of this processor, I have accompanying Asus Rampage 2 Extreme. This board was nearly 400 USD when new, but packed full of features. There are tons of options for multi-GPU setups, there's fat heat pipes with ability to quickly swap to a full-on water cooling and excellent overclocking potential. It even has probes to allow for more accurate voltage reading and manual OC switch for quick adjustment under extreme conditions. For today's testing, I'm using 12GB of Corsair's DDR3 memory, which is running at 1600MHz, a fresh install of Windows 10 on a SATA-based SSD. I chose AMD's HD6970 as the OG GPU and the GTX 1080 Ti as the fastest available GPU for this board. Before you say anything, yes, I have the RTX 3080 ready, but for some reason, certain revisions of Rampage 2 Extreme would not work with the 20 or 30 series of Nvidia cards. Oh well. To cool the processor off, I've used Noctua's NH-U9DX in a push-pull configuration. We really need all the help there is with this 130W TDP chip. Overall, I think this setup will pass the Dream Gaming PC from 2010. Let me know down in the comments below if you think otherwise. Let's establish the stock CPU performance first by using Cinebench R20. The 960 scored 1071 points. In CPU-Z, the single thread score was 292 points and the multi-score was at 1,541 points. For comparison, the Q9550 at 3.6 GHz that we tested a few weeks ago pushed single thread score of 323 points. In Heaven Benchmark, with the usual preset, the system managed to push 767 points. OK, before we apply any overclocks, I need to quickly run Prime95 for a few minutes just to make sure we are OK with the temps, which were already in the high 60s. Yikes! But we are not here to run stock speeds, are we? Most people are hitting the sweet spot around 4GHz and I'm going to aim for that today. The Extreme Tweaker tab in BIOS pretty much covers all of the important changes one needs to make. I also did disable C states and all of the unnecessary board components to maybe help with stability? Extreme overvoltage sounds fun, but I've kept it disabled. I'm no expert overclocker, but let's start by enabling XMP for the triple channel memory and also set the base clock to 160 and the core voltage to 1.35 volts. That should be good enough for 4 GHz, let's test it. Prime95 is pushing hottest core to 82C, I think I'm happy with this, so let's now run CPU Z to see how much more this 960 has to give. At 4 GHz, the single thread score went up to 352 and the multi score up to 1848, a nice 20% increase. Cinebench R20 score went up to 1307, again, a nice 22% increase. Now let's see how is the 960 doing with games. 
both the older HD6970 and 1080 Ti are first used with identical settings, AMD card should pose as the bottleneck. Then I used maxed out settings with just the 1080 Ti and hopefully I'll reverse the bottleneck over to the CPU. First game we tested was 2014's Watch Dogs. At medium settings with high textures, game runs smoothly and the OG6970 pushed nearly 56 FPS on average. The 1080 Ti doubled out at 114 FPS and the CPU was utilized to about 50% on average. With ultra settings, the average FPS dropped to 91.5 FPS and the CPU was working slightly harder too. Let's visit Geralt in Witcher 3 next. At medium settings, the 6970 really struggled in this title, pushing only 25 FPS on average and the CPU was not up to much either with very low usage. The 1080 Ti delivered nearly 180 FPS on average and the 960 was then used to about 60% on average. At ultra settings, even the 1080 Ti is utilized fully and the average was 109 FPS. Very impressive results and beautiful graphics, especially for a 2015 title. The Need for Speed Hot Pursuit in its 2020s remastered edition and at medium settings was no challenge even for the HD6970. It had no trouble to keep solid 60 FPS, more so with the 1080 Ti at maxed out settings. Piece of cake. For the first time on the channel I've tested 2017's PUBG. At medium settings, the HD6970 pushed respectable 40 FPS on average, the 960 saw about 40% usage on average. The 1080 Ti more than tripled the FPS to 155 and the average CPU usage went up to about 60%. I can't say I've noticed any difference in perceived graphics quality when using maxed out settings, but hey, the FPS dropped to 141 on average, so it must have done something. Mafia Definitive Edition was another one of the titles where the HD6970 really struggled. Even at low settings, the average was just 17 FPS, making it unplayable. The CPU saw around 40% use on average. The 1080 Ti flexed and pushed 108 FPS on average, and the CPU went up to high 60s. Switching over to high settings and the average dropped to 94 FPS and the CPU was now in high 70s. Despite this, the 1080 Ti still had some to give. In GTA 5, the 6970 delivered nice results. Game was at high settings and with 8x AF enabled, I saw an average of 48 FPS. Nvidia nearly doubled that at 86 FPS, the i7 was in 40s across both cars. With all the settings but the advanced cranked all the way up, I saw very little drop to 83 FPS on average and nearly identical CPU usage. Going all the way back to GTA 4 next, and using the maxed out settings, the HD6970 delivered somewhat disappointing 41 FPS on average, and even the 1080 Ti was not really up to much at 75 FPS. This game, I mean, it's a love hate situation. Next up, it's the 2017's Fortnite and a medium preset. The game was playable with the 6970 and I saw 35 FPS on average. 1080 Ti absolutely murdered it with 150 FPS and at around 40% utilization, it's just chilling. With Epic preset, the average frame rate dropped to 81 FPS and the utilization doubled. Good luck. 
switching to Formula 1 2015 and using the Ultra settings, the older 6970 still manage a nice average of nearly 36 FPS. 1080 Ti pushed 142 FPS on average and made the 960 work harder at around 80% usage. With 80% GPU utilization, I think there was still some performance left on the table. This was of course the inbuilt benchmark, not me behind the wheel, just to be clear. Next game tested was Battlefield 5. Taking the legendary Tiger Tank for a quick blast, using low settings, the HD 6970 managed 31 FPS on average, which is really impressive, considering it was decade old when this game released. 1080 Ti did not disappoint, and at 97 FPS I enjoyed smooth gameplay. The CPUs it scaled accordingly, AMD kept it around mid-50s and Nvidia around 70s. At ultra settings, the average dropped to around 83 FPS on average. I'm blown away by how good this game looks. Red Dead 2 was up next. I always enjoy testing with this game. It's a shame the 6970 was not able to take part. With the setting slider all the way up to right, the 1080 Ti was working really hard and pushed 58 FPS on average. The CPU was in high 70s most of the time, but we've yet to see it being used to 100% on all cores. Last game tested was of course Cyberpunk 2077. I noticed few glitches whilst playing in more remote locations, not entirely sure what upset some of the palm trees to be honest. Maybe they did not like the 70 year old processor in my test bench, who knows. Anyway, using high preset and we saw nearly 70 FPS on average and perhaps the highest CPU utilization of all today's testing. With Ultra Preset, we dropped the average to 52 FPS. What a result! And that was all the testing with the i7 I had for you today. Let's throw a quick summary. As you know, many modern titles will benefit from having four or more CPU cores, and with the new Intel and Ryzen lineups around the corner, the pressure is really on. Soon, more and faster options will be available up for sale on the second-hand market. I've been really lucky and purchased all of the components for today's testing for under £50 or about €60 USD, and looking at eBay would suggest there is still market for the X58 enthusiast, but it does come at a price. So what do we think of the i7-960? Well, the X58 platform offered amazing performance back in the day and it still continues to deliver. Given you pair it up with a decent enough GPU, you can still enjoy modern titles with this i7 processor. Of course it has aged, and with lack of support for any newer hardware, I cannot recommend you buy into it. However, for a decade old chip, I'm not disappointed, not by one bit. I've not run into any problems during my testing, but for the annoying incompatibility with the 20 and 30 series of GPUs, however, this was specific to my board. This video was first of hopefully many, where we look at legacy Intel processors. Let me know what you think of the format, I'm always open for suggestions. Was it one too many games that I tested today? Did you like the inclusion of the OG GPU to better represent way back then performance metrics, or do you only care for the fastest available GPU? In the next episode, we will return to the best gaming quad-core processor in the history, but that is all I'm going to say for now. As ever, thank you very much for your support, I'm slightly behind with my release schedule thanks to a recent heatwave, so I appreciate your patience. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and also smash the like button if you do enjoy this content. Heck, might as well let me know, did you ever own a first generation of an i7 processor? I'll see you all in the next one.